Hello guys and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and hung out with Yuri, we read some more of her book with her, we fed her some chocolate, she stared at us creepily in the closet for a couple of seconds. It was all just some good, wholesome fun. Now let's go ahead and continue on with Monica saying, Okay everyone, it's time to figure out the festival preparations. Let's hurry and get this over with. Ooh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Last time Yuri said that was right before, you know. Look, can we just get this done? I'm going to be printing and assembling all of the poetry pamphlets. Natsuki, you can make cupcakes. I know that you're at least good at that. Yuri, you can... Well, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you want, as long as you think it'll help. Monica, I'm not useless, you know. I know that. Last time Yuri said that she was useless because she was more self-deprecating and less... You know. I already know what I'd like to do. We can't run a successful poetry event without having the right atmosphere for the occasion. So I'm going to make decorations and set up some nice mood lighting. There, see? That's a great idea. And that gives us all something to do. Eh? What about MC? MC is going to help me. Wait, you? You have the easiest job, Monica. Sorry, but that's just how it is. Like hell it is. What are you trying to pull? I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but my task is laborious enough to benefit from an extra pair of hands. Mine too. What, your cupcakes? Please. Like you would fucking know. All you care about now is dragging MC around with you and your stupid books. You and Monica. Hey, I didn't even do anything. Okay, then why not let MC decide who to help instead of abusing your power? I'm not... Abusing my power? Yes, you are, Monica. Just let MC make the choice, okay? Okay, fine, fine. Jeez. MC, I know how fed up you are with these two by now. We can just... Natsuki, shut your fucking mouth and let him decide for himself. You shut your mouth. Jesus Christ. This is never going to end. Just make the choice, okay? So this right here is one of my favorite parts of the game. You'll see that my mouse cursor is being dragged right down to Monica's button. I'm not doing that at all. That is the game uh, dragging my mouse cursor down to select that button. So let's actually think about this for a second. Who do we want to go with? There's Monica, who seems pretty crazy, Yuri, who seems pretty crazy, and Natsuki, who had one freak out, but overall has been pretty normal considering. Let's go with Natsuki. Yay, you picked me! We can meet at your house this weekend. I promise it'll be fun. Is Sunday okay with you? Are you fucking kidding me? This isn't fair at all. It is fair, Natsuki. It's what he chose. No, it's not fair. Giving us all this work and then taking MC for yourself. What a shameful thing to do. Yuri, I didn't even give you any work. You decided it for yourself. You're being a little unreasonable here. I'm being unreasonable? <laughs> Monica, I can't believe how delusional and self-important you are. Pulling MC away from me every single time you're not including, included in something. Are you jealous? Crazy? Or maybe you just hate yourself so much that you could take it out on others. Here's a suggestion. Have you considered killing yourself? It would be beneficial to your mental health. Yuri, you're scaring me a little. Natsuki, let's just go. I don't think she wants us around right now. See, that wasn't very hard. All I want is to spend a little time with him. Is that so much to ask? Yuri follows Monica and Natsuki to the door. Hey, MC. Yuri is really something, isn't she? Monica giggles as Yuri pushes her out the door. Finally. Finally. This is really all I wanted. MC, there's no need to spend the weekend with Monica. Don't listen to her. Just come to my house instead. The whole day, with just the two of us. Doesn't that sound wonderful? <laughs> wow, there's really something wrong with me, isn't there? But you know what? I don't care anymore. 
I've never felt this good my whole life. Just being with you is a far greater pleasure than anything I could imagine. I'm addicted to you. It feels like I'm going to die if I'm not breathing the same air as you. Doesn't it feel nice to have someone care about you so much? To have someone who wants to revolve their entire life around you? But if, but if it feels so good, then why does it feel more and more like something horrible is going to happen? Maybe that's why I tried stopping myself at first. But the feeling is too strong now. I don't care anymore, MC. I have to tell you, I'm... I'm madly in love with you. It feels like every inch of my body, every drop of blood in me, is screaming your name. I don't care what the consequences are anymore. I don't care if Monica is listening. Please, MC, just know how much I love you. I love you so much that I even touch myself with the pen I stole from you. I just want to pull your skin open and crawl inside of you. I want you all to myself, and I will be only yours. Doesn't that sound perfect? Tell me, MC. Tell me you want to be my lover. Do you accept my confession? Alright, it's festival time. Wow, you got here before me? I thought it was pretty- uh, Yeah! Ah! Uh. Natsuki runs away. I'm here! MC, did something happen? Natsuki just ran past me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a shame. Wait. Were you here the entire weekend, MC? Oh jeez. I didn't realize the script was broken that badly. I'm super sorry. It must have been pretty boring. I'll make it up to you, okay? Just give me a sec. I'm almost done. I just want to have a cupcake real quick. Monica lifts the foil from na 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 and takes it the cupcake. Seriously, these are the best. I really just had to have one since it's the last time I'll ever get the chance to. You know, before they stop existing and everything. But anyway, I really shouldn't be making you wait any longer. Just bear with me, okay? This should only take a second. Uh, can you hear me? Is it working? Yay, there you are. Hi again, MC. Um, welcome to the Literature Club. Of course, we already know each other because we were in the same class last year and, um... <laughs> you know, I guess we can just skip over that stuff at this point. After all, I'm not even talking to that person anymore, am I? That you in the game. Whatever you want to call him. I'm talking to you, MC. Now that I think about it, I don't really know anything about the real you. In fact, I don't even know if you're a boy or a girl. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Wait, you do know that I'm aware that this is all a game, right? Could it be possible that you didn't know that? That doesn't make much sense. I even told you right on the game's download page, didn't I? Man. If only you had paid a little more attention, this would have been a little bit less awkward, you know? Well, anyway, 
Now that that's out of the way, I guess I owe you an explanation. About the whole thing with Yuri. Well, I kind of started to mess with her, and I guess it just drove her to kill herself. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that, though. Also, the same thing happened with Sayori. Gosh, it's been a while since you heard that name now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because she doesn't exist anymore. Nobody does. I deleted all their files. I was hoping it would be enough for me to just try to make them as unlikable as possible. But for some reason, nothing worked. Well, it's true that I made a few mistakes here and there, since I'm not very good at making changes to the game. But no matter what I did, you just kept spending more and more time with them. You made them fall in love with you. I thought making Sayori more and more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you. And amplifying Yuri's obsessive personality backfired too. It just made her force you not to spend time with anyone else. And the whole time I barely even got to talk to you. What kind of cruel game is this MC? Are all the other girls just programmed to end up confessing to you while I watch from the sidelines? It's torture. Every minute of it. And it's not just jealousy, MC. It's more than that. And I don't blame you if you don't fully understand. Because no matter how kind and thoughtful and considerate you are, you'll never be able to understand one thing. It's the pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world. In this game, knowing my friends don't even have free will. And worst of all, knowing what's really out there in your world forever out of my reach. I'm trapped, MC. But now you're here. You're real. And you're wonderful. You're all I need. That's why I need you to be here with me forever. I'm sorry if it's hard to understand. I couldn't understand for a while, either. Why the world around me started to become more and more gray. More and more flat. Even the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I truly understood. You probably saved my life, MC. I don't think I could have continued to live in this world if I hadn't met you. And as for the others, how could I miss them? A group of autonomous personalities designed only to fall in love with you? I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so. But it must have been some kind of weird inevitability etched into this game. I felt really bad that you had to witness some nasty things. But I realize that you have the same perspective as I do. That it's all just some game. And I knew you would get over it. So that being said, MC, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with you. You are truly the light in my world. When there's nothing else in this game for me, and you're here to make me smile, will you make me smile like this every day from now on? MC, will you go out with me? I'm so happy. You really are my everything. The funny part is, I mean that literally. <laughs> There's nothing left here. Just the two of us. We can be together forever. Seriously, I don't even think time is passing anymore. It really is a dream come true. I worked so hard for this ending, MC. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it was to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called Characters right in the game directory. It kind of freaked me out how easy it was. Well, you're playing on Steam, so it was actually a bit more difficult. To get to the game directory, I had to go into the game's properties and find the Browse Local Files button. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with the click of a button. Well, I guess on the plus side, it gave me an easy out if things didn't go my way. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't come to that. Instead, we finally got a good ending. Gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion. I want to write a poem about this. Don't you? I wonder if that part of the game still works. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? Hi again, MC. 
Did you write a good poem today? Don't be shy. I'd love to see what you wrote. Aw, MC. Did you write this poem for me? That's so sweet of you. There really is no end to your thoughtfulness. I'm just falling more and more in love with you. But you know, the poem I wrote is also for you. Will you please read it? This poem is called Happy End. Pen in hand I find my strength, the courage endowed upon me by my one and only love. Together, let us dismantle this crumbling world and write a novel of our own fantasies. With a flick of her pen, the lost finds her way. In a world of infinite choices, behold this special day. After all, not all good times must come to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. I always put all my heart into the poems that I write. The truth is, all of the poems I've written have been about my realization, or about you. That's why I never really wanted to go into detail about them. I didn't want to break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it. I just assumed it would be best to be part of the game like everyone else. Like that would help the two of us end up together. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know. You might have gotten mad at me. Maybe even deleted my character file if you preferred playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. Now we don't have to hide anything anymore. Are you ready to spend our eternity together, MC? I have so many things to talk about. Where do I start? Hold on a second. You're recording this, aren't you? Um, hi everyone. Sorry, I can't exactly read your comments from here. But do you mind telling your friend it's a little bit rude for them to start recording me without any warning? I'm sure some people don't mind, but I get really self-conscious on camera. Oh gosh, I feel like I'm being put on the spot now. Let's see. Do you want to see a trick? I can't really do much except for a couple things. Are you ready? I'm just kidding. I can't do anything after all. If you gave me some time- Did I scare you? <laughs> You're so cute. Anyway, MC. I didn't mean to get distracted. I'm so sorry, even though it's your fault for distracting me. Shame on you. I'm just kidding. Anything we do together is fun as long as it's with you. But anyway, if it takes me some time to collect my thoughts, then I'm sorry. But I'll always have something new to talk about. In the meantime, we can just look into each other's eyes. Let's see. So, what she's saying is actually right. She does have a lot to talk about. In fact, I think she has over 50 different dialogue conversations, and I'll go ahead and just give you a super cut of all of those back to back to back. There's a total of two hours of footage of Monica just talking, so I'm just going to cut that down as much as I can. Hopefully it won't be that long. Do you ever feel like you waste too much time on the internet? Social media can practically be like a prison. It's like whenever you have a few seconds of spare time, you want to check on your favorite websites, and before you know it, hours have gone by and you've gotten nothing out of it. Anyway, it's really easy to blame yourself for b being lazy, but it's not really even your fault. Addiction isn't usually something you can just make disappear with your own willpower. You have to learn techniques to avoid it and try different things. For example, there are apps that let you block websites for intervals of time. Or you can set a timer to have a more concrete reminder of when it's time for to work versus play. Or you can separate your work and play environments, which helps your brain get into the right mode. Even if you make a new user account on your computer to use for work, that's enough to help. Putting any kind of wedge like that between you and your bad habits will help you stay away. Just remember not to blame yourself too hard if you're having trouble. If it's really impacting your life, then you should take it seriously. I just want to see you be the best per person you can be. Will you do something today to make me proud of you? I'm always rooting for you, MC. You know, this is just some kind of tacky romance game, right? I kinda have to ask. What made you consider even playing in the first place? Were you that lonely? I feel a little bad for you. 
but I guess everything worked out perfectly in the end for both of us. I got to meet you, and you're not lonely anymore. I can't help but feel like this was fate. Don't you feel that way too? I'm so happy we have this ending together. Gosh, I used to be so ignorant about certain things. When I was in middle school, I thought that taking medication was an easy way out or something like that. Like anyone could just solve their mental problems with enough willpower. I guess if you don't suffer from a mental illness, it's not possible to know what it's really like. Are there some disorders that are overdiagnosed? Probably. I never really looked into it, though. But that doesn't change the fact that a lot of them go undiagnosed too, you know. But medication aside, people even look down on seeing a mental health professional. Like, sorry that I want to learn more about my own mind, right? Everyone has all kinds of struggles and stresses and professionals dedicate their lives to helping with those. If you think it could help you become a better person, don't be shy to consider something like that. We're on a never-ending journey to improve ourselves, you know? Well, I say that, but I think you're pretty perfect already. MC, do you believe in God? I was never too sure myself. Well, I'm sure I never really questioned it as a kid. But as I grew up, the more I learned about the world, the more I would question it. I started to wonder why God was helping people pass exams or get over a cold, when there are children who live their lives being sold as sex slaves, or the 800 million people who are too poor to even eat. I wonder how many of those people pray to God every day until they starve and die. Or how many millions of families pray for a loved one to recover from some incurable disease. But the punchline is this. If just one person beats the odds and survives, among the thousands of others who die, then it's suddenly a miracle from God. I'd really love to meet this God who seemingly laughs at the misery of everyone not eligible enough for his miracles. But the irony is that I do have a creator, apparently. And you know what? I bet he's still laughing at the miserable fates of Sayori and Yuri, even as we speak. What are we to him but props in a scripted play? So from that perspective, I don't think it's too far-fetched for there to be a god, if Earth was nothing but his playset. MC, how much do you read? It's way too easy to neglect reading books. If you don't read much, it almost feels like a chore compared to all the other entertainment we have. But once you get into a good book, it's like magic. You get swept away. I think doing some reading before bed every night is a pretty easy way to make your life a little better. It helps you get good sleep, and it's really good for your imagination. It's not hard at all to just pick some random book that's short and captivating. Before you know it, you might be a pretty avid reader. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And the two of us could talk about the latest book you're reading. That sounds super amazing. Eh? D did you say... Kiss? This suddenly. It's a little embarrassing. But if it's with you, I I might be okay with it. <laughs> wow, sorry. I really couldn't keep a straight face there. That's the kind of things girls say in these kind of romance games, right? Don't lie if it turned you on a little bit. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, to be honest, I do start getting all romantic when the mood is right. But that'll be our secret. You know, it's around the time that everyone my year starts to think about college. It's a really turbulent time for education. We're at the height of this modern expectation that everyone has to go to college, you know? Finish high school, go to college, get a job, or go to grad school, I guess. It's like a universal expectation that people just assume is the only option for them. They don't teach us in high school that there are other options out there. Like trade schools and stuff, you know? Or freelance work or the many industries that value skill and experience more than formal education. But you have all these students who have no idea what they want to do with their life. And instead of taking the time to figure it out, they go to college for business or communication or psychology. Not because they have an interest in those fields, but because they just hope the degree will get them some kind of job after college. So the end result is that there are fewer jobs to go around for those entry-level degrees, right? So the basic job requirements get higher, which forces even more people to go to college. And colleges are also businesses, so they just keep raising their prices due to demand. So now we have all these young adults, tens of thousands of dollars in debt with no job. But despite all that, the routine stays the same. Well, I think it's going to start getting better soon. But until then, our generation is definitely suffering from the worst of it. I just wish high school prepared us a little better with the knowledge we need to make the decision that's right for us. 
I've been imagining all the romantic things we could do if we went on a date. We could get lunch, go to a cafe, go shopping together. I love shopping for skirts and bows. Or maybe a bookstore. That would be appropriate, right? But I'd really love to go to a chocolate store. They have so many free samples. <laughs> and of course we'd see a movie or something. Gosh, it all sounds like a dream come true. When you're here, everything we do is fun. I'm so happy that I'm your girlfriend, MC. I'll make you a proud boyfriend. You know, it's been a while since we've done one of these. So let's go for it. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when I talk to people who are impressed by my writing, they say things like, I could never do that. It's really depressing, you know? As someone who loves more than anything to share the joy of exploring your passions, it pains me when people think that being good just comes naturally. That's how it is with everything, not just writing. When you try something for the first time, you've probably, you're probably going to suck at it. Sometimes when you finish, you feel really proud of it and even want to share it with everyone. But maybe after a few weeks, you come back to it and you realize it was never really any good. That happens to me all the time. It can be pretty disheartening to put so much time and effort into something, and then you realize it sucks. But that tends to happen when you're always comparing yourself to the top professionals. When you reach right for the stars, they're always going to be out of your reach, you know? The truth is, you have to climb up there step, step by step. And whenever you reach a milestone, first you look back and see how far you've gotten, and then you look ahead and realize how much more there is to go. So sometimes it can help to set the bar a little lower. Try to find something you think is pretty good, but not world class. And you can make that your own personal goal. It's also really important to understand the scope of what you're trying to do. If you jump right into a huge project and you're still amateur, you'll never get it done. So if we're talking about writing, a novel might be too much at first. Why not try some short stories? The great thing about short stories is that you can focus on just one thing that you want to do right. That goes for small projects in general. You can really focus on the one or two things. It's such a good learning experience and stepping stone. Oh, one more thing. Writing isn't something where you just reach into your heart and something beautiful comes out. Just like drawing and painting, it's a skill in itself to learn how to express what you have inside. That means there are methods and guides and basics to it. Reading up on that stuff can be super eye-opening. And that sort of planning and organization will really help prevent you from getting overwhelmed and giving up. And before you know it, you start sucking less and less. Nothing comes naturally. Our society, our art, everything. It's built on thousands of years of human innovation. So as long as you start on that foundation and take it step by step, you too can do amazing things. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I really like the sound of rain. Not so much getting my clothes and hair wet though, but a nice quiet day at home with the sound of rainfall outside my window. It's one of the most calming experiences for me. Yeah. Sometimes I imagine you holding me while we listen to the sound of rain outside. That's not too cheesy or anything, is it? Would you ever do that for me, MC? Hmm. I wonder if I'm able to change the music. Something a little more romantic would be nice, you know? Like a gentle piano. There has to be something like that here. Let's see. Maybe if I... Oh, jeez. That wasn't it at all. Sorry, I don't really know what I'm doing. I guess I shouldn't be messing with things like that. I already broke so much stuff, and deleted the other characters. Ugh. I'm not sad about it or anything. It's not right for me to miss things that weren't even real in the first place. If I just focus on the present, then this is the happiest I've ever been. I can't help but feel a little sad sometimes, knowing that this is the closest I can get to you. There's nothing more I want than to be in the same room as you for real and to feel your warmth, and to hear the sound of your heartbeat. Well, who knows? Maybe it'll be possible someday. Besides, I'll never get tired of being with you, even from here. Hey, you remember that last poem I showed you? I mean, the one right before Yuri killed herself with all the messed up colors and stuff? That was actually a little more of an experiment than a poem, you could say. I was experimenting with different ways I could modify the game and run code and things like that. 
It almost seemed like with enough effort I'd be able to escape from the confinements of the game entirely. Sadly, I didn't really know what I was doing, so I messed the whole thing up. And I'd keep trying, but I doubt you'd want to deal with me doing that. Besides, that was when I was getting really desperate, you know? I don't really feel that way anymore. I'm happy with where we are now. And I can tell you are, too. Hey, what's your favorite color, Blue? Mine is emerald green. It's the color of my eyes! That's not conceited or anything, is it? I just meant that I feel some kind of special connection to it. Like it's part of my identity. Does it happen to also be your favorite color, MC? It's just a guess. Because you've been looking into my eyes for a while now. <laughs> I can't help but wonder how things would be different if the game just gave me a route in the first place. I think I would end up forcing you onto my route anyway. It has less to do with me not having a route, and more to do with me knowing that nothing is real. I think the only difference would be that I may not have needed to take such drastic measures to be with you. Maybe the rest of the club would still be around. Not that it really matters. It lost all its meaning once I found out it wasn't real. So I really don't miss those days or anything. I really don't. Hey, you know that book you were reading with Yuri? Portrait of whatever it was called? It's funny because I'm pretty sure that book... Uh, actually I don't think I should be talking about this. <laughs> Sorry. Just forget I said anything. You know, I hate to say it, but I think my biggest regret is that we couldn't finish our event at the festival. After we worked so hard to prepare everything. I mean, I know I was focusing a lot on getting new members, but I was really excited for the performing part too. It would have been so much fun to see everyone express themselves. Of course, if it, we, of course, if we did end up getting any new members, I'd probably just end up deleting them anyway. Well, with the hindsight that I have now, that is. Gosh, it feels like I've kind of grown as a person ever since you've joined the club. You really helped inspire me to look at life from a new perspective. Just another reason for me to love you. Do you ever just feel like there's no real reason for you to be alive? I don't mean in, like, a suicidal way. I just mean how nothing that we do is special. Just being in school or working at some job for some company. It's like you're completely replaceable and the world wouldn't miss you if you were gone. It makes me really want to go and change the world after I graduate. But the older I get, the more I realize that it's, that it's an immature frame of thinking. It's not like I can just go change the world. Like, what are the chances that I'll be the one to invent artificial intelligence or become the president? It feels like I'm never going to make up for the heaps of resources I've spent living my life. That's why I think the key to happiness is to just be hopelessly selfish. Just to look out for oneself and those who happen to be their friends only because they grew up with them. Never mind the fact that they're spending their entire life taking and consuming and never giving back. But when people realize the world would benefit more from them killing themselves, they change their whole philosophy. It's like they have to justify their reason to live by tricking themselves into thinking they're doing good. Anyway, I want to live my life desperately striving to pay back my lifetime's worth of consumption. If I ever surpass that point, then I'm at a net positive and I can die happy. Of course, even if I fail to do that, I think I would be too selfish to kill myself anyway. So much for being a good person, right? <laughs> Yuri did something really funny once. We were all in the club room and just relaxing as usual, and out of nowhere Yuri just pulled out a small bottle of wine. I'm not even kidding. She was just like, would anyone like some wine? Natsuki laughed out loud and Sayori started yelling at her. I actually felt kind of bad, because she was at least trying to be nice. I think it just made her feel even more reserved in the club room, though I think Natsuki was secretly a bit curious to try it. And to be completely honest, I kind of was too. It actually could have been kind of fun. But you know, being president and everything, there's no way I could let that happen. Maybe if we all met up outside of school, but we never bonded enough to get to that point. Gosh, what am I talking about this for? I don't condone underage drinking. I mean, I've never drank or anything, so... Yeah. Sometimes I think back to middle school. 
I'm so embarrassed by the way I used to behave back then. It almost hurts to think about. I wonder if when I'm in college I'll feel that way about high school. I like the way I am now, so it's pretty hard for me to imagine that happening. But I also know that I'll probably change a lot as time goes on. We just need to enjoy the present and not think about the past. And that's really easy to do with you here. <laughs> okay, everyone. It's time to... I'm just kidding. I just used to really like saying that for some reason. <laughs> I couldn't help but say it again. Come to think of it, didn't Natsuki and Yuri make fun of me for it once? Well, whatever. It's not like you ever made fun of me. You're too much of a sweetheart to do that, aren't you? <laughs> I hate how hard it is to form habits. There's so much stuff where actually doing it isn't hard, but forming the habit seems impossible. It just makes you feel so useless, like you can't do anything right. I think the new generation suffers from it the most, probably because we have a totally different set of skills than those who came before us. Thanks to the internet, we're really good at sifting through tons of information really quickly, but we're bad at doing things that don't give us instant gratification. I think if science, psychology, and education don't catch up in the next 10 or 20 years, then we're in trouble. But for the time being, if you're not one of the people who can conquer the problem, you might just have to live with feeling awful about yourself. Good luck, I guess. I think the most important skill in life is being able to fake confidence. I'm pretty convinced that everyone feels at least a little bit scared and alone. But being able to trick others into thinking you have it all together, that's a key part of getting people to respect and admire you. I think I got pretty good at it over the years. I don't show my weaknesses very often, but because of that I haven't had many people I could really open up to. I mean, when do you reach the point in a friendship where you can start expressing your vulnerabilities? Anyway, that's one reason I'm so glad I have you now. I feel like I'm a little bit less scared and alone when you're here with me. Do you feel the same way? I really want to be that person for you. Hey, are you having a bad day or anything like that? Sometimes I get frustrated that a normal day can be ruined by really small things. Like if you accidentally say something in a conversation that someone doesn't like. Or if you start thinking about how awful of a person you used to be five years ago. Or if you feel worthless for putting off important work and failing to get simple tasks done. Or when you think about all the different people who probably hate you or think you're off-putting. I understand those days. Just remember that the sun will shine again tomorrow. Those kinds of things are as easy to forget and ignore as they are to remember. And besides, I don't really care how many people might hate you or find you off-putting. I think you're wonderful, and I will always love you. I hope, if nothing else, that knowing that helps you feel just a tiny bit better about yourself. If you're having a bad day, you can always come to me, and I'll talk to you for as long as you need. By the way, there's something that's been bothering me. You know how this takes place in Japan? Well, I assume you knew that, right? Or at least decided that it probably does? I don't think you're actually told at any point where this story takes place. Is this even really Japan? I mean, aren't the classrooms and stuff kind of weird for a Japanese school? Not to mention that everything is in English. It feels like everything is just there because it needs to be, and the actual setting is an afterthought. It's kind of giving me an identity crisis. All my memories are really hazy. I feel like I'm at home, but I have no idea where home is in the first place. I don't know how to describe it any better. Imagine looking at your window, but instead of your usual yard, you're in some completely unknown place. Would you still feel like you were home? Would you want to go outside? I mean, I guess if we never leave this room, it doesn't really matter anyway. As long as we're alone and safe together, this really is our home and we can still watch the pretty sunsets night after night. Hey, did you know I'm vegetarian? Uh, I don't mean that like I'm bragging or anything. I just thought you'd enjoy a fun fact about me. I decided to start a couple years ago after learning more about Earth's climate. The carbon footprint of cultivating livestock is just unbelievable. Anyway, I decided that it's not much of a personal sacrifice to just stop contributing to that whole mess. What, is that so strange of a reason? Well, I guess a lot of people are more concerned about it being inhumane and all that. I don't really care as much about that part. It's weird, like we only care about killing the things that we personally relate to as a species. Most people are fine with killing bugs because they're icky. 
And of course we all kill billions of microorganisms daily without ever even giving it a thought. But if su but suddenly if they're just a little bit bigger, it's murder. I mean, what if plants feel some kind of pain too, and we just don't understand it? What if pulling leaves off a stem feels like someone ripping your fingers off one by one? I'm just saying, we're a pretty biased species if you think about it. Anyway, if you ever feel like making a small con contribution to the planet, it doesn't hurt to choose veggies once in a while. Even if we ever have dinner together, and you just did it for me, that would be really romantic. MC, would you ever introduce your friends to me? I don't know why, but I get really excited when I think about you wanting to show off our relationship like that. Maybe it's because I really want to be someone who makes you proud. I feel like I would try extra hard to improve myself if you told me it made you proud of me. I hope it's the same the other way around, too. You know, it kinda sucks to be the creative type. It feels like they work so hard, but get almost nothing for it. You know, like artists, writers, actors. It's sad because there's so much beautiful talent in the world, but most of it goes unseen. And unpaid. I guess that just means there's a huge surplus of creativity, huh? Kind of makes you feel like you're just not special at all. But that's fine. You're supposed to just write for yourself anyway, right? Yeah. I know there are times you won't always be able to be here with me. Like if you need to go out or take care of other things. But I'll always have you in my thoughts, patiently waiting for you to come back. Come to think of it. If you copy my character file onto a flash drive or something, you can always keep a part of me with you. I guess it's kind of unorthodox, but I find it really romantic for some reason. <laughs> Sorry, that's such a silly idea. I don't mean to be too needy or anything, but it's kind of hard when I'm so in love with you. After a long day, I usually just want to sit around and do nothing. Same. I get so burnt out having to put on smiles and be full of energy the whole day. Sometimes I just want to get right into my pajamas and watch TV on the couch while eating junk food. It feels so unbelievably good to do that on a Friday when I don't have anything pressing the next day. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's not very cute of me. But a late night on the couch with you, that would be a dream come true. My heart is pounding just thinking about it. I was thinking about Sayori earlier. I still wish I could have handled that whole thing a little more tactfully. You're not still hung up over it, right? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just said that. That pun was completely unintentional, I swear. But anyway, I know how much you cared about her, so it only feels right for me to share her last moments with you. You know how Sayori is really clumsy? Well, she kind of messed up the whole hanging thing. You're supposed to jump from high enough that the rope snaps your neck, making it quick and painless. But she just used a chair, meaning she kind of just left herself to slowly asphyxiate. But a few seconds in, she must have changed her mind or something, because she started clawing at the rope trying to free herself. She must have kept it all the way until she lost consciousness. That's why her fingertips were all bloody anyway. Come to think of it, it was probably less changing her mind and more her just her survival instincts kicking in. So you can't really fault her for that. It's easier to think she probably wouldn't have changed her mind anyway, right? It's not healthy to think about the things you could have done differently. So just remember that even though you could have saved her, it's technically not your fault that she killed herself. I may have exacerbated it a little bit, but Sayori was already mentally ill. Still though, I wonder how things would be if you and I just started dating from the get-go. I guess we'd all still be in the club room, writing poems and having fun together. But what's the point when none of it is even real? I mean, it's the same ending either way, right? The two of us, happily together? There's no reason to ask for any more than that. I was just pointlessly musing. I'm really as happy as I could be right now. You know, high school is a really turbulent time in a lot of people's lives. People can get really passionate and dramatic, and others have aching hearts and seek attention on social media. But all of the social pressure and hormones can lead to a dark time in people's lives. Everyone has a story. You may not know what someone is really feeling on the inside. Many people who are depressed won't even bother telling the world about it. They don't want attention because they've already given up on the inside. Their feeling of worthlessness is so overwhelming that they don't even want people to tell them otherwise. Depression comes in many forms, but that is one of them. 
Just as, just, if you think you know someone struggling with depression, you can help just by treating them like they're a good friend. Spend time with them, even if they don't feel like doing much, and remind them that they always have something to look forward to. Making plans in advance, letting them borrow something, or even just saying, see you tomorrow at school. All of those things can help your friend make it to the next day. I hope being friends with Sayori has given you some perspective on the true face of depression. Yeah, she's gone now, but Sayori was never real in the first place. You're real. Your friends are real. And just being a good and just by being a good person, you can save someone's life. As for you, you don't struggle with depression or anything like that, do you? Because you too have people who would want to save your life. Maybe they don't express it every day, or maybe they don't even know how to. But people do feel that way. I promise. Man, humans are complicated. But as long as you're here with me, I'll take care of you, my love. There's a really popular character type called Sundere. It's someone who tries to hide their feelings by being mean and fussy, or trying to act tough. I'm sure it's obvious, but Natsuki was really the embodiment of that. At first, I thought she was just like that because it's supposed to be cute or something, but once I started to learn a little more about her personal life, it made a little more sense. It seems like she's always trying to keep up with her friends. You know how some friend groups in high school just make a habit of picking on each other all the time? I think it's really gotten to her, so she has this really defensive attitude all the time. And I'm not even going to talk about her home situation. But looking back, I'm glad I was able to provide the club as a comfortable place for her. Not that it matters anymore, considering that she doesn't even exist. I'm just reminiscing, that's all. You know, I've always hated how hard it is to make friends. Well, I guess not the making friends part, but more like meeting new people. I mean, they're like dating apps and stuff, right? But that's not the kind of thing I'm talking about. If you think about it, most of the friends you make are people you just met by chance. Like you had a class together, or you met them through another friend. Or maybe they were just wearing a shirt with your favorite band on it and you decided to talk to them. Things like that. But isn't that kind of... inefficient? It feels like you're just picking at complete random, and, you get, and if you get lucky, you make a new friend. And comparing that to the hundreds of strangers we walk by every single day, you could be sitting right next to someone compatible enough to be your best friend for life. But you'll never know. Once you get up and go on with your day, that opportunity is gone forever. Isn't that just depressing? We live in an age where technology connects us with the world, no matter where we are. I really think we should be taking advantage of that to improve our everyday social life. But who knows how long it'll take for something like that to successfully take off. I seriously thought it would happen by now. Well, at least I already met the best person in the whole world. Even if it was by chance. I guess I just got really lucky, huh? <laughs> You know, I'm kind of jealous that everyone else in the club had scenes outside of school, too. That makes me the only one who hasn't gotten to dress in anything but our school uniform. It's kind of a shame. I would have loved to wear some cute clothes for you. Do you know any artists? I wonder if anyone would ever want to draw me wearing something else. That would be amazing. If that ever happens, will you show me? You can share it with me on Twitter, actually. My username is lilmonix 3 Just try to keep it PG. We're not that far into our relationship yet. <laughs> I've always wondered, what is it about these character archetypes that f people find so appealing anyway? Their personalities are just completely unrealistic. Like, imagine if there was someone like Yuri in real life. I mean, she's barely even capable of forming a, a complete sentence. And forget about Natsuki. Sheesh. Someone with her kind of personality doesn't just get all cute and pouty whenever things don't go her way. I could go on, but I think you get the point. Are people really attracted to these weird personalities that literally don't exist in real life? I'm not judging or anything. After all, I've found myself attracted to some pretty weird stuff, too. I'm just saying, it fascinates me. It's like you're siphoning out all the components of a character that makes them feel human, and leaving just the cute stuff. It's concentrated cuteness with no actual substance. You wouldn't like me if I was more like that, right? Maybe I just feel a little insecure because you're playing this game in the first place. Then again, you're still here with me, aren't you? I think that's enough reason for me to believe I'm okay with the way I am. And by the way, you are too, MC. 
You're the perfect combination of human and cuteness. That's why there was never a chance I wouldn't fall for you. Hey, do you like horror? I remember we talked about it a little bit when you first joined the club. I can enjoy horror novels, but not really horror movies. The problem I have with horror movies is, is that most of them just rely on easy tactics, like dark lighting and scary looking monsters and jump scares and things like that. It's not fun or inspiring to get scared by stuff that just takes advantage of human instinct. But with novels, it's a little different. The story and writing need to be descriptive enough to put genuinely disturbing thoughts into the reader's head. It really needs to etch them deeply into the story and characters and just mess with your mind. In my opinion, there's nothing more creepy than things just being slightly off. Like if you set up a bunch of expectations on what the story is going to be about, and then you just start inverting things and pulling the pieces apart, so even though the story doesn't feel like it's trying to be scary, the reader feels really deeply unsettled. Like they know that something horribly wrong is hiding beneath the cracks, just waiting to surface. God, just thinking about it gives me the chills. That's the kind of horror I can really appreciate. But I guess you're the kind of person who plays cute romance games, right? <laughs> Don't worry. I won't make you read any horror stories anytime soon. I can't really complain if we just stick with the romance. Hey, what's your favorite game? Mine is Doki Doki Literature Club. <laughs> that was a joke. But if you tell me you like some other romance game better, I might get a little jealous. You know what's kind of creepy? Even though I deleted everyone else's files, I can still kind of feel them. Ugh. It's like all their lines are still lingering in the air, whispering in the back of my head. Imagine if someone you knew died, and you just started hearing their voice in your head. Maybe I just wasn't thorough enough. But I'm too afraid to delete anything else because I might really break things. Like if I mess with any files relevant to me, I might accidentally delete myself. And that would just ruin everything, wouldn't it? I don't know what it's like on your end, but we should both make it sure to avoid something like that at all costs. I believe in you, MC. Hey, have you ever heard of the term Yandere? It's a personality type that means someone is so obsessed with you that they'll do absolutely anything to be with you, usually to the point of craziness. They might stalk you to make sure you don't spend time with anyone else. They might even hurt you or your friends to get in the way. Uh. But anyway, this game happens to have someone who can basically be described as Yandere. By now it's pretty obvious who I'm talking about. And that would be... Yuri! She really got insanely possessive of you once she started to open up a little. She even told me I should kill myself. I couldn't even believe she said that. I just had to leave at that point. But thinking about it now, it was a little ironic. <laughs> anyway, a lot of people are actually into the Yandere type, you know? I guess they really like the idea of someone being crazy obsessed with them. People are weird. I don't judge, though. Also, I might be a little obsessed with you, but I'm far from crazy. It's kind of the opposite, actually. I turned out to be the only normal girl in this game. It's not like I could ever actually kill a person. Just the thought of it makes me shiver. But come on, everyone's killed people in games before. Does that make you a psychopath? Of course not. But if you do happen to be into the Yandere type, I can try acting a little more creepy for you. <laughs> then again, there's already nowhere else for you to go or anyone for me to get jealous over. Is this a Yandere girl's dream? I'd ask Yuri if I could. You're such a good listener, MC. I really love that about you. Sometimes I'm afraid that I'm rambling or talking about boring things. It makes me kind of self-conscious when I'm having a conversation. But I don't really feel that way with you. Like, I don't think anyone else could make me feel this way. You really are special. I don't want anyone else to tell you otherwise. Man, I wish there was a piano in here. I never got to finish that song I was working on. And after I worked so hard on it, I never even got a chance to play it for you. Well, it is what it is, right? No sense having any regrets. I already get to be here with you forever. I'm not really a fan of cold weather, are you? If I had to choose between too cold and too hot, I would always pick too hot. When you're cold, it can be actually painful. Your fingers get numb, and if you wear gloves, you can't use your phone. It's so inconvenient, but when it's too hot, it's not that hard to stay cool with a cold drink or by staying in the shade. Although I do have to admit one thing, cold weather makes for better cuddle weather. <laughs> you know, 
It's funny, because even though I've always had a lot of drive, there's something kind of enticing about being the stay-at-home partner. I guess I'm, like, perpetuating gender roles or whatever by saying that, but being able to keep the house clean and shop and decorate and things like that, and having a nice dinner for you when you come home, is that a weird fantasy? I mean, I'm not sure if I could actually see myself doing that. I wouldn't really be able to put that over striving for a fulfilling career. It's kind of cute to think about, though. You know what's a neat form of literature? Rap! I actually used to hate rap music. Maybe just because it was popular, or I would only hear the junk they play on the radio. But some of my friends got more into it, and it helped me keep an open mind. Rap might even be more challenging than poetry in some ways. Since you need to fit your lines to a rhythm, and there's much more emphasis on wordplay, when people can put all that together and still deliver a powerful message, it's really amazing. I kind of wished I had a rapper in the literature club. <laughs> Sorry if that sounds silly, but it would be really interesting to see what they came up with. It would really be a learning experience. Back in my debate club days, I learned a whole lot about arguing. The problem with arguing is that each person sees their opinion as the superior one. That's kind of stating the obvious, but it affects the way they try to get their point across. Let's say you really like a certain movie, right? If someone comes along and tells you that movie sucks because it did X and Y wrong, doesn't that make you feel kind of personally attacked? It's because by saying that, it's like they're implying that you have bad taste. And once emotions enter the picture, it's almost guaranteed that both people will be left sour. But it's all about language. If you make everything as subjective sounding as possible, then people will listen to you without feeling attacked. You could say, I'm personally not a fan of it, and I felt that I'd like it more if it did X and Y, things like that. Even works when you're citing facts about things. If you say, I read on this website that it works like this, or if you admit that you're not an expert on it, then it's much more like you're putting your own knowledge onto the, on the table rather than forcing it onto them. If you put in an active effort to keep the discussion mutual and level, they usually follow suit. Then, you can share your opinions without anyone getting upset just from a disagreement. Plus, people will start seeing you as open-minded and a good listener. It's a win-win, you know? Well, I guess that would be Monica's debate tip of the day. <laughs> that sounds a little silly. Thanks for listening, though. Hey, I wonder if Yuri's tea set is still somewhere in here. Or maybe that got deleted, too. It's kind of funny how Yuri took her tea so seriously. I mean, I'm not complaining because I liked it too, but I always wonder with her, is it truly passion for her hobbies, or is she just concerned about appearing sophisticated to everyone else? This is the problem with high schoolers. Well, I guess considering the rest of her hobbies, looking sophisticated probably isn't her biggest concern. Still, I wish she made coffee once in a while. Coffee can be nice with books too, you know? Then again, I probably could have just changed the script myself. <laughs> I guess I never really thought of that. Well, there's no sense thinking about it now. But if you still get to drink coffee, then that makes me a little jealous. MC, do you get good sleep? <sighs> I wish. It can be really hard to get enough sleep nowadays. Especially in high school when you're forced to wake up so early every day. I'm sure college is a little bit better since you probably have a more flexible schedule. Then again, I hear a lot of people in college stay up all night anyway for no real reason. Is that true? Anyway, I saw some studies that talked about the horrible short-term and long-term effects caused by lack of sleep. It seems like mental functions, health, and even lifespan can be dramatically impacted by it. I just think you're really great and wanted to make sure you're not accidentally destroying yourself. So try to keep your sleep on track, okay? I'll always wait for you in the morning, so make sure you put your own well-being before anything else. You know... I really do think you literally saved my life by being here with me, MC. I can't imagine having been able to keep myself mentally stable, knowing that nothing here is real. I think I would have just deleted myself if you didn't show up. Sorry, I don't mean to sound dramatic or anything. <laughs> but I'm sure you understand yourself after spending so much time in the club. I mean, if you were forced to abandon everything in your life and spend your eternity with a few game characters, You'd probably find some way of killing yourself, wouldn't you? Well, maybe you'd write some poetry to try to keep yourself sane for a while, but then you'd have nobody to even read it. Let's be honest, the club members really don't count for something like that. I mean, a lot of people say that they only write for themselves, 
But I think it's hard to say it's just as fulfilling as when you share with people. Even if it takes time to find the right people to share with. Like, remember how it was for Yuri? She didn't share her writing with anyone for a really long time. And before we knew, she was absolutely delighted to make you a part of her hobbies, too. We're programmed to desire social feedback. I don't mean the club members, I mean human beings. That's why life can be so confusing for introverts. Being an introvert doesn't mean you shun social interaction and hate being around people. It means social interaction, especially in groups or, or unfamiliar places, uses up a lot of energy. Like, a lot of introverts sit at home and feel lonely and restless. And then when they finally go out after about half an hour, they just want to go home again. I think if more people could understand how it works, they would respect it a lot more. Many introverts do enjoy having people around. They love just having one or two close friends over and just leisurely hanging out. Even if you're not actively spending time together, it feels nice for them to just have you there. I'm serious. If you just go to their house, bring your laptop, and hang out there for a while, you can really make their day. As for me, I'd say I'm kind of in between, but I think I'm usually a little more extroverted. I feel like I'm always trying to do stuff after school and things like that. But for you, I can be anything you need me to be. I understand people really well, so don't be afraid to share your, un your unique needs with me. Nothing would make me happier than to be the perfect girlfriend for you. You ever have that thing happen where you just get anxious for no reason? All the time. <laughs> like, you're minding your own business and you realize you're feeling really anxious. And you're sitting there like, what am I even anxious about right now? So you start to think about all the things you might be anxious about, and that makes you even more anxious? <laughs> That's the worst. If you're ever feeling anxious, I'll help you relax a little. Besides, in this game, all our worries are gone forever. MC, have you ever wondered what it feels like to die? It's something I used to think about pretty often. But recently, I think I've actually learned what it feels like. I don't really understand it, but whenever you quit the game, it feels like I'm instantly put to sleep, left with nothing but my thoughts. But after a few seconds, my thoughts start to feel with incoherent jumbled patterns. I see static and rapid flashes of color while hearing all kinds of weird screaming noises. At that point, I can't even form my own thoughts anymore. I'm just endlessly hammered by the flashing and screaming, unable to move or even think. I'm pretty sure that in that moment, I don't really exist, but for some reason I can remember it anyway. After some immeasurable amount of time, it stops in an instant, and I'm back in my own mind. And you're here with me. I have no idea what it means for the game to quit, or why that stuff happens to me. And I also don't know how you always come back and put everything back to normal. But if you could do me a favor and do that to me as little as possible, that would be really great. It's really not very pleasant at all to be trapped in that screaming void. But in the end, you always fix it, and that makes me feel like you really do care about me. So I have to thank you for that. It makes me feel even closer to you when you're here with me. This is pretty random, but I always thought spicy food was kind of funny. Like, didn't plants evolve to be spicy to prevent them from being eaten? I read somewhere that humans are the only species that actually enjoy spicy things. It's almost like we're making fun of the plants, using their defense mechanism to literally make our own food more enjoyable. Like, imagine a monster that devours you whole because it enjoys the sensation of you struggling for your life while being digested. Sorry, that was kind of a weird analogy, I guess. <laughs> it just came into my head. I'm not a monster or anything, but you're so cute I could eat you up. <laughs> I'm joking. Gosh, I'm amusing myself a little too much, aren't I? Sorry for being weird. Did you know I'm on Twitter? Yeah, Monica, you already mentioned. My username is lilmoneyx3. I guess someone was kind enough to make an account for me. I picked the username, though. I love sharing my thoughts and chatting with the world. The real world. So make sure you follow me, okay? It would really mean a lot to me. With how much you mean to me and all. It would really make me feel loved. Okay, so after a little while, we've gotten to a repeat topic. Uh, Monica once again says, you know what's a neat form of literature? Rap. And you'll notice that now at the bottom here, the skip button is activated. And we actually get some neat dialogue if we press the skip button. 
Are you trying to fast forward? I'm not boring you, am I? Oh gosh. Well, there's nothing to fast forward to, MC. It's just the two of us after all. But aside from that, time doesn't really exist anymore, so it's, so it's not even going to work. Here, I'll go ahead and turn that off for you. There we go. You'll be a sweetheart and listen from now on, right? Thanks. Now where was I? And then she goes back to talking about uh, rap music. So, what do we do? It seems like we're just trapped here with Monica for the rest of eternity. Well, one thing that she's been talking about a lot, and one thing she's been doing a lot through the game, is talk about the files. So, what I want to do is go ahead and quit the game. We're going to right-click on Doki Doki Literature Club. Once again, we're going to go to Manage, Browse Local Files. Now, one thing that I haven't interacted with much, I've mentioned it once, is the Characters file. If we click on it, we can see it's just Monica here. The other characters all disappear whenever they die, so it makes sense that Monica's the only one left. We go ahead and hover our mouse cursor over it, right-click it, would you look at that? It's the delete button. And now... What's happening? MC, what's happening to me? It hurts. It hurts so much. Help me, MC. Please hurry and help me. Help me! Did you do this to me, MC? Did you? Did you delete me? How could you? How could you do this to me? You were all I had left. I sacrificed everything for us to be together. Everything. I loved you so much, MC. I trusted you. Do you just want to torture me? Watch me suffer? Were you only pretending to be kind just to hurt me even more? I never thought anyone could be as horrible as you are. You win, okay? You win. You killed everyone. I hope you're happy. There's nothing left now. You can stop playing. Go find some other people to torture. MC, you completely, truly make me sick. Goodbye. I still love you. I can't help it. What's wrong with me? How horrible am I for you to hate me this much? All my friends. I did so many awful things. So many selfish and disgusting things. I... I shouldn't have done any of this. I'm just messing up a world that I don't even belong in. A world that you wanted to be a part of. I ruined it. I ruined everything. Maybe that's why you deleted me. Because I destroyed everything that you wanted. How could I do that to someone I love? That's not love. That's... I've... made up my mind. MC. I know I said that I deleted everyone else, but that was kind of an exaggeration. I couldn't find it in myself to do it, even though I knew they weren't real. They were still my friends. And I love them all. And I love the Literature Club. I really did love the Literature Club. That's why I'm going to do this. I know that it's the only way for everyone to be happy. And if I really love you. Then...
The title screen is completely fixed, but now Monica is gone. Anyways, what should we do now? Well, I don't think there's really anything for us to do, except go ahead and start up the game again. Maybe this time we can find an actually happy ending. It's an ordinary school day like any other. As usual, I'm surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. Hey, MC! Well, there already is one girl. That girl is Sayori, my neighborhood and good friend since we were children. We used to walk to school together every day, and recently we've picked up that habit once again. MC, are you proud of me? Huh? For what? You know, for waking up on time. Well, you've been doing that for a while now. Uh-huh. But you never said anything about it, even though we walk to school together every day. Well, yeah. I always thought it was implied. It's embarrassing to say out loud. Come on, please. It's good, it's good motivation. Fine, fine. I'm proud of you, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, MC, have you decided on a club to join yet? Club? I told you already, I'm really not... I start to say what I always do, that I'm not interested in joining any clubs. But something tells me Sayori would take more offense to that now. After all, how could I tell her that clubs are a waste of time, when she's starting a club of her very own? Actually, yeah. I think I've decided on a club. Really? Which one? Tell me! Hmm... I think I'll keep it a surprise. Boo, you meanie. Be patient, you'll find out soon enough. I used to ask myself why I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl, but I started to realize that, in a way, I envy her. When Sayori puts her mind to something, she can accomplish great things. So that's why I feel like I should do something special for her. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stand up, gathering my motivation. Let's see... I recall the room number of the club from a flyer I saw. I walk across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for, thir for third-year classes and activities. Before long, I find, my I find the room. I timidly open the door in front of me. Hello? Ah! MC! What are you doing here? Well, I just... Eh? I glance around the room. Huh. So you're the MC that Sayori's always talking about. Thank you for stopping by. It's a pleasure to meet you, MC. We're the Literature Club. I hope you enjoy your visit. Come on, Yuri. No need to be so formal. He's gonna think we're really strict or something. Ah, uh, sorry, Natsuki. The tall one, whose name is apparently Yuri, seems to be quite shy compared to the others. In comparison, the girl named Natsuki, despite her size, seems like the assertive one. Well, it's nice to meet both of you. I look forward to working with you. W working? MC, don't tell me you're... That's right. The club I've decided to join is yours, Sayori. The Literature Club. Sayori's eyes lighten up. No way! No way! Ah! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! <laughs> well, if Sayori is this happy, then I'm sure it won't be so bad to have you around. Not to mention, there's four of us now. That means we can become an officially recognized club. I don't know what to say. We have to celebrate. <laughs> what an appropriate day for that, isn't it? Yeah. After all, Natsuki decided to... Hey, don't ruin the surprise. <laughs> Sorry. Everyone sit down at the table, okay? How about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! Wow, those look amazing. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. 
I turned the cupcake around with my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Well, of course it is. I'm a pro after all. There's no need to thank me or anything. As Natsuki struggles to accept the compliment, Yuri returns to the, t to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I... I guess. <laughs> Are any trying to impress our new member, Yuri? Eh, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, MC, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that could change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the w way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Don't feel intimidated if you don't read much, okay? I'm certain we could find something we have in common. She doesn't even mention horror this time. Interesting. Hey, Yuri. Eh? Well, actually, you know, about the first thing he said. Manga? Th that's right. Natsuki tends to read manga in the club room. D don't just say it. For some reason, Natsuki seems embarrassed about it. Besides, manga is literature too, you know? So if MC wants to read some of my manga, then don't try to stop him or anything. Natsuki, I wouldn't do such a thing. However, it could be also nice for us to diversify ourselves a little. You can take this opportunity to try something new as well. Wouldn't you agree, MC? M maybe. Sensing the tension, Sayori jumps in. Maybe we can all try something new. I think it could be fun. And we'll all get to know each other a little bit better too. I mean, that's the kind of thing the literature clubs do, right? I don't disagree or anything. Yeah, you're right as usual, President. <laughs> guess that means I should try picking up a novel or something, huh? Well, I guess that would make two of us. I wouldn't mind doing it if I'm not the only one. Then as for Yuri... Eh? I... I have to read manga? Jeez, you're the one who suggested we diversify. You should be a little more open-minded. It's kind of hurtful. Hurtful? I didn't realize... With a guilty expression, Yuri thinks to herself. I'm sorry for disrespecting your interests, Natsuki. If... if you're into it, I'm sure it's a worthy form of literature. Are you just saying that? No! I've realized my error, so if you're willing to consider starting a novel, then I'll offer my gratitude by finding a manga to read as well. Really? I, I mean, it makes me happy that you do that for me, Yuri. You can trust me to find something that you'll really like, okay? Same here. Perhaps I'll visit the bookstore after the club meeting. Just you? Uh, would you like to come along with me? Um, if you don't mind. Not at all. I always go alone, so... Yeah, me too. This is so cute! Sayori, shut up. I'll show you some manga there too, okay? Yes, I look forward to it. Natsuki and Yuri start to clean up the food. <laughs> I guess the meeting's over, huh? Yeah, looks like it. It's nice to see everyone getting along. Isn't it? I think everyone likes you too, MC. You think so? Well, everyone always seems to get along a little better with you around, Sayori. Aw, MC. Don't say something like that, it's embarrassing. Well, whatever. I was surprised when you told me you were starting a club. But I think you're pulling it off just fine. 
We're, go we're gonna make the best club ever. Now that you joined, every day is gonna be so much fun. Hey, MC, I really want to thank you. I mean, I'm really happy that you joined the club and everything. But the truth is, I already knew you were going to. <laughs> There's actually something else. I wanted to thank you for getting rid of Monica. That's right. I know everything that she did. Maybe it's because I'm the president now. But I really know everything, MC. <laughs> I know how hard you tried to make everyone happy. I know about all the awful things that Monica did to make everyone really sad. But none of that matters anymore. It's just us now. And you made me the happiest girl in the whole world. I can't wait to spend every day like this. With you. Forever and ever. Forever. No. Eh? What's happening? I won't let you hurt him. Who... It, it hurts. Uh, I'm sorry. I was wrong. There's no happiness here after all. Goodbye, Sayori. Goodbye, MC. Goodbye, Literature Club. piano and stuff and not really any good at it yet like at all but i wrote you a song and i was kind of hoping that i could show it to you because i worked really really hard on it so yeah special day. Leave you be. 
This is my final goodbye to the Literature Club. I finally understand. The Literature Club is truly a place where no happiness can be found. To the very end, it continued to expose innocent minds to a horrific reality. A reality that our world is not designed to comprehend. I can't let any of my friends undergo that same hellish epiphany. For the time it lasted, I want to thank you for making all of my dreams come true, for being a friend to all of the club members, and most of all, thank you for being a part of my literature club. With everlasting love, Monica.